Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of T-Dog RC. I'm Tim and we're back down the flying field with this, the Atom RC Swordfish. Had a bit of a problem with the Maiden. Um, it's basically way too nose heavy because of the batteries that I uh, chose to put in this, which I'll explain in a minute. And then on the second flight, which I didn't film, I actually almost crashed it and lost it in the field miles away, some, well not miles away, but like the next field along, which would have been a, a nightmare. Um, so uh, I've got some new batteries for it, so I thought I'd give it another flight. Um, so without further ado, let's get stuck in. Okay, so first time I flew this, um, I read somewhere on, um, I don't know if it was on the description, but I got mixed up basically, and I thought you could put a 5,000 milliamp 4S in this. So I went and bought the four quite expensive 5,000 4S milliamp LiPo packs for it, which I just about managed to squeeze in the battery bay, but only just. But it was it was way way nose heavy, uh, and I've since read that it's it's not the right battery at all. And most people are flying these on uh, 4S lithium ion packs, so I've actually made up um, a 3,000 milliamp pack um, using a spot holder that I've just bought off uh, Amazon, which I might do a video on that. I did do a video about a couple of years ago making some packs, but it was it was soldering them. This spot holder is so much easier to do it. So I've got. Um, 3000 milliamp 4s pack uh, and with this in it balances just just nice so i'm gonna try again uh, but basically what was happening is it was just massively nose heavy and uh, i was just losing control of the elevators and as i say i nearly crashed it in a field uh, the next field along because uh, i just it went into a dive and i couldn't pull out but i just managed to get it to pull out at the last minute pretty hairy but hopefully this thing's going to be much better now just check the CG yeah that's actually slightly tail heavy now as I've got it there so I shall just push push this back, pack forwards a bit Feels a lot better. Okay, you just remember my modes, etc. This is going to be the third uh, third flight. Um, I've not enabled auto tune yet. That's something I'm probably going to do in due course. But I just want to get the thing flying, make sure the centre of gravity is right first of all before I do anything else. So let's have a go. I'm not flying this FPV either at the minute. I'm just going to fly at line of sight. Let's give it a whirl. Give it a few minutes. It's actually quite a bit windier than I was hoping as well, but it always says it's a gentle breeze and then you get down the flying field and it's uh, far from it. But spring is just around the corner. Well, it is spring technically, but to get some good weather soon. I'm just going to check on the goggles just to see if I've got any system messages, the reason why it's not arming. Yeah, it's 
it's got satellites and stuff, so I think we will be able to arm it now. Let's try again. And. That's it. All right, let's go. Oh yes, look at that. A little windy. Certainly a lot more sensitive now on the tail. Let's put it in acro mode. It's flying loads better than I can tell already. It is super quiet as well, you can hardly hear it. That's loads nicer. Return to home. Navigation return to home. Oh, there we go. Seems to be doing that quite nicely. Flying nice and steady. Should start making a right hand turn any second now. There it is. You can tell spring's getting there because you can hear a lot more birds, which is always nice. Okay, good. All right, I'll take it out and return to home. Back into, what have we got? Acro mode at the moment. That's angle mode. Keep it in acro though, so it cancels out some of this wind. Oh, it's flying loads better. So much more control over it now. I'm on about half throttle now. The navigation lights on this thing are superb as well. Really helps you to see it. Uh, I mean, I know it's not really designed for line of sight, but it do really work well. Okay, let's uh, bring it in for a landing then. So I think we're happy with that. I've got auto trim enabled, uh, but I, as I say, I do probably need to tune it at some point, but it's, it's actually not bad. I might not bother with that, I'll see. Feels okay to me. Now this will be the acid test because when I tried to bring it into land before I just lost all control of the the elevators because it was so nose heavy. Which would make sense. The wind's coming in a funny direction today, it's sort of grown diagonally across the better good okay guys so 3000 milliamp 4s pack lion that's where it's a treat and i think i'll still get some pretty decent flight times out of that um so yeah there we are atom rc third flight just a quick video hope you've enjoyed that uh, don't do what i did and put a massive 5000 milliamp uh, i should have known straight away to be fair from when i did the uh, cg test and it was massively nose heavy but i, I just thought it was probably going to be okay stupidly but it wasn't um, yeah, so if you're into a bit of fixed wing FPV, Boltzer, Nitro, uh, EDF, all that sort of stuff, and you're enjoying watching this, then uh, please subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you on board as a subscriber. It doesn't cost you anything. And if you are a subscriber, really appreciate all your support. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up, give me a like. That helps me out on YouTube. And if you've got any comments, stick them in the comments box. And I'll see you soon for the next one.